Hello and welcome to this old Yankee woodworking shop uh, where we're going to talk about uh, making an incline table for the new fit bike. Okay, I've cut this to length 76 inches long by 36 inches wide. I used about uh, half a container of uh, wood glue. Use a little chip brush. They're cheap, one time use. And as you see, I love clamps. You cannot have too many clamps for this operation. I made a box. Um, these boards started their lives as 2x8s. This board remains a 2x8. These other boards um, I ripped on this little table saw here down to 6 inches wide. The length of this board is about 57 inches, but really anywhere from 55 to 60 inches is fine. Uh, this whole apparatus is upside down, this little box right here. Uh, the width is slightly more than 36 inches, it's 36 and a quarter, and you'll understand why. Uh, the end of this board, and this isn't a requirement, but I put a little angle on here, a little uh, 30 degree angle. And all these boards, uh, you can run them through a planer. Uh, we're not making art here, uh, but you can run them through a planer. Uh, or a joiner, whatever you want to make the surfaces a little bit smoother, but it's not a requirement. Uh, you'll see what I'm up to as we get a little further along. Here's the box flipped upside down. Actually, the whole thing right now is flipped upside down. But now the box and the lid are in correct orientation to each other. All the way around the lid, there should be about an eighth of an inch gap between the lid and the box. And I don't really care what happens from here forward. I only care what happens right now from here backward. I need to have that eighth of an inch gap all the way around the outside. And that's why you need to make this box square. You need to do as much as you can to keep this box square when you make it. Let's say you didn't quite get your box square. Would you like another bite at the squareness apple? You can have that because these three-quarter sheets of plywood, remember I, I cut these things down and so I'm going to take these leftover pieces and I'm going to use these. Remember, this is upside down, this is the bottom. Uh, so to give this thing some sheer strength um, and to help keep it square, uh, I'm going to put some of these pieces of plywood, I'm going to intersperse them throughout. Let's see if we can make some sense out of what we're doing here. Remember, this is upside down. The fit bike is going to fit upside down on top of this. Okay. Now, this is an incline table. What we're trying to do is make it so that your rider, when you're fitting him, can be positioned while he's riding uphill out of the saddle, for example. So, this whole table has to tilt. These gate hinges are acting as our pivot. Okay. So, we're going to screw these down and I'll show you. All right. Now, when this is bolted onto here, this will pivot like this. I have a pair of hinges here, and this pivot, when this pivots, this is coming down, which means this is going up. The fit bike is going to go up in the air. Why are we doing it like this? Because when we first started making these incline tables, we put the pivot in the back, but there was a lot of weight. We had the fit bike and the rider, the whole complex had to be lifted up in the air, and that was hard to do. So we made a teeter totter instead. Uh, where should this pivot be? Well, a little bit back from the center of gravity. Where we put our holes for these gate hinges is going to describe exactly where this plate is going to line up on this, on this frame. Remember, we've got about an eighth of an inch gap all the way around so that this plate can rotate inside this box. So wherever these holes go, that's going to describe where this plate sits because these holes in this gate, that's what's holding this plate onto this frame. So I would recommend that you drill some pilot holes here. We built a rear box and now we're going to build a front box and attach it to the rear box to make one big rectangle and then our frame will be mostly done. So this box right here uses this central pivot point as one end. 
uh, and the whole perimeter of this thing matches the perimeter of the lid so that when we turn it upside down, the lid will sit squarely on this thing. Um, the rear box, remember, these outside edges here, they project a little bit forward. And we did that because we are lagging these pieces to this piece in order to give this whole thing some structure. I slapped a couple coats of paint on this thing. Um, I think since the last time we talked, I added a couple of more stabilizers here. This is the base. Remember, this whole thing's upside down. I'm pretty much uh, done with everything I can do right now, so I'm going to flip it around and see what I have. Here's the frame, and now I'm going to put the lid on. And notice the fit bike, not yet assembled, just right out of the crate, is sitting right next to it. I'm going to actually assemble this fit bike on the incline table. I've got this lid screwed down onto these uh, two uh, gate latches that are underneath, gate hinges. Um, so if I did everything right, then when I push down here, this should come up in the front. So let's see, it does, it works, yahoo! Here's with the lid on, now I'm putting the fit bike on. These purely custom fit bikes come on casters so you can roll them around, but I don't want them to roll around. I want to fix this hard to the top lid of the incline table. So I took out the casters and that left me with a convenient 5 8 inch threaded female opening. So I bought some 5 inch long 5 8 hex bolts and that's what I'm using to affix the fit bike to the lid of the incline table. When we built the frame, I wanted to add some plywood pieces for some shear strength. And I had one of these at each end, and that means that they're in the way as I'm trying to tighten down these 5 8 inch hex bolts. So I've got my hole saw here, and I'm drilling some access points so that I can easily get to those 5 8 bolts. Now I'm going to try to make a rubber surface to stick to the top of this incline tape. Okay, I'm going to try some things I've never tried before, such as doing woodworking on rubber. Um, this is a rubber flooring uh, that I'm going to attempt to use on my incline table. And I need to cut the rubber really precisely for reasons which you'll see. Um, so I'm going to try to do it with my track saw. Uh, I don't think I'm supposed to do this, but here we go. And voila, nice clean cut. So I guess it's possible. Okay, so question is, is this going to look like an Island Lucy episode? This is contact cement. I got it at Home Depot. So, yeah, you know, the thing about contact cement is what exactly do they mean when they say contact? Well, that word contact. To me, on contact, as in as soon as the surface meets the glue, that's all she wrote, that's it. Or does it mean that I can put it down and it's a little bit slippery, and I can slide it into place, and uh, boy, I've got real forebodings about this. This is the part that I've been dreading. Close enough. Close enough. Oh. All right. Ta -da! So this piece here is going to sit in tension between um, downward pressure exerted by this 5 8 bolt and the pressure in the opposite direction by this foot pod. You want to keep this thing uh, tight, snug, but relatively level through the airplay of these two pieces because this and this screw in different directions. 
I always have this facing a little bit downhill. So these foot pods are screwed all the way up in there, and those foot pods are backed out quite a bit uh, for reasons which I'll get to uh, in a moment. And now I must confess to a miscalculation. I had thought that by doubling up my top plate, adhering two three-quarter inch pieces of plywood to each other, making a double thick piece, that this would resist sag in the back. Now, I was wrong about that. So I had a two inch piece of aluminum tubing, pretty stiff, that I had hanging around and I made a spine that stiffens this thing up nicely. Um, I had to retrofit this thing by drilling a hole through the pivot piece, passing this pipe through, and I had four pieces of two inch uh, EMT conduit strapping and I used that to affix this tube to the underside of the plate. Uh, much better if you do this in advance. As you'll note, I'm mostly done. Um, I put a piece of three quarter inch ply on here, drilled a hole with a two and a quarter inch hole saw, pushed this trailer jack through, which I bought at Tractor Supply for $29. I bought them from Harbor Freight. Um, I'm assembling this fit bike as it's sitting on the incline table. Uh, this is about a nine and a half percent pitch. This is 9%, it's about as steep as you ever need to go in bike fitting. This does the purpose, this serves the purpose. Um, you'll notice that this um, is a sort of slow process though. Um, you might remember uh, that we had caster wheels down here and what we uh, took out when we took the caster wheel out was a 5 8 bolt and this has a six millimeter Allen uh, in the top of it. And we use that 5 8 hole uh, to drill some 5 inch long 5 8 hex bolts up from underneath to attach uh, the lid here and the fit bike to each other. So what I did was I took this little doodad that's got a 6 millimeter Allen and this is a piece of um, half inch EMT and I uh, took a hammer and I just clubbed this thing down inside of there and then I drilled a hole in it to pass the bolt through that affect, affixes this uh, handle and voila uh, it's now motorized. Uh, I'm going to stand here well forward of where the weight would, would be if the rider was on here and show you and I've got more than enough power in this handheld drill to incline the rider. Now mind you, this is what I use when I incline the uh, handlebar and saddle pedestals. The vertical is done this way with the drill. The horizontal is done with a hand wheel. So all I have to do is take the tool I'm already using and that's how I handle the decline and the incline on my incline table. And that's it. The incline table is done.